Hi there, everyone. Uh, welcome to church this morning. Um, heard a commercial on TV. It was a little while ago, and it was, they said they're doing church different, and I guess this is church done differently. Uh, thanks for checking things out, and thanks for tuning in, and we're going to try and keep you guys updated through the website, uh, maybe even a couple times a week if you want to check back. Even by the middle of the week, have some announcements and just some thoughts about what's happening and what's going to be going on in the church. So I encourage you guys, as always, to keep checking back with the website and, and keep um, just keep on top of what's happening. And like everyone else, uh, we're just taking things uh, one day at a time. Uh, this morning, we're going to be starting a new series uh, of messages. We're going to be looking at uh, the book of Ephesians. Um, it's something I've been wanting to study through. It's something that I've been wanting to look at. And so... Um, we're going to be starting with our look at the background of Ephesians, looking at some of the things that kind of set the scene for what's going to be happening. Um, before we get into things and, and before we get into what we're going to be talking about today, I want to just tell you guys a little story about a lady named Hetty Green. Um, Hetty had the distinction of dying as one of the greatest misers of all time. Um, she died in 1916, and at that time she had an estate worth well over $100 million dollars which i guess if you put it in today's money that's we're talking close to a billion dollars worth of assets and wealth but she was a complete miser um she was known to eat her oatmeal for breakfast with cold water because she didn't want to pay the extra electricity to boil water to heat to heat her to eat her oatmeal her young son had uh, broken his leg when uh, he was just about 10 years old and uh, she spent so much time trying to find a free clinic that by the time she found one. They had to amputate her son's leg because the infection was so bad. She died at, uh, at the age of about 86 from heart complications because she bought only rotten milk. She didn't want to buy real whole milk. I tell you this story to make the point that many of us as believers live the same way as Hetty Green did. We live as spiritual misers. We live unwilling to tap into the vast resources that are made available to us through Jesus Christ. The book of Ephesians is written to tell Christians of their great riches, all the things that they have, their inheritance, the fullness they have in Jesus Christ and in his church. This book is the word, that word riches is used five times. The word grace is used 12 times. Glory is used eight times. Fullness, filled up, or fills, six times. And the key phrase you will hear over and over again in the book of Ephesians is, in Christ. It is used 15 times in this book. Christ is the source, the guarantee, our access to all the things that we have in God. This book was written to try to explain to us as believers in Jesus Christ of all the things that we have in him. So many times as believers, and even as a church, we struggle through so many things, things we don't have to struggle with if we would only understand who we are and what we have in Christ. This book is written to explain the mystery of the church. The church is not an organization. Even if we in our postmodern culture have made it one, the church is not a club, and the church is clubhouse. The church is a living organism. That's why in scripture it's called the body of Christ. It is called a mystery in this book, the mystery of the church, because it's hard for people to understand unless you've been a part of it. It's hard to know without having experienced it. The church is alive with Christ as its head and the Holy Spirit as its lifeblood. And we, the chosen saints, are the parts of the body. This book explains how each one of us as part of the body are to interact with each other, treat each other, and work together. The church is the only incarnation of Christ that many people will ever see. And so I ask, if we are that representation of Christ, how are we doing? Are we giving a good representation of who Christ is or a distorted one? We're going to get into more of the details as we study through this book. This book describes who we are in Christ, who we are as the church and what God expects of his church. The first three chapters are doctrinal or theological, if you will. The last chapters of this letter emphasize the, expect, the expected behavior of believers 
and the church. Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul somewhere between 60 and 62 AD while he was in prison in Rome. Paul wrote this letter as a circular letter. It was to be shared with all the churches around Asia Minor. He sent the letter to Ephesus first, and that's where it got its name from. Ephesus today is located on the shores of what we now call Turkey. If you want to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1, we'll just read the first couple of verses and, and take a look at what is there. So if we read in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 1, Paul talks about our his dual source of authority. First, as an apostle chosen by Christ, and second, he is fulfilling the will of God. Paul was the final apostle chosen by Christ. Apostle simply means sent one. But according to the scripture, there have only been how many apostles? Now, if I was going to be preaching this at church, I was going to ask the kids if they could name who the different apostles were and how many there were, but I guess seeing how you're watching this online, you could just pause and check it out for yourself. But in the scriptures, we are told of 12 apostles, including John, Judas, right? The first 12. After Judas uh, committed suicide, Matthias was appointed to replace Judas. And then lastly, Paul. So that makes a total of 14 apostles that have been mentioned in the scriptures. All these men were with Christ and chosen by him. We no longer have any apostles in the church. The apostles were the foundation. They were the building blocks of the church. They're the ones chosen and set apart to receive the revelation of Christ. And they're the ones who taught it and who wrote it down. They're they the authors of our New Testament. As an apostle chosen by Christ on the road to Damascus, Paul had the authority of an apostle. Also, he had been one who started this church. He had been the one who planted it, and now he writes this letter to encourage them in their faith. Secondly, he says, by the will of God. He is fulfilling God's will in his life, in particular to the Gentile church, which he was given to plant the churches and not only to start them but to minister to them paul next talks about our dual designation as believers first of all we are called saints god's holy people and that's what the definition of a saint is is one made holy not one who achieves holiness but one declared holy the scripture calls all believers saints we are all declared holy through the work of jesus christ on the cross we are declared righteous not by righteous things that we have done because the greatness of what we have achieved but instead who jesus christ is and what he has done for us we are declared saints or holy some feel it's unearned they don't like the name of being called saints um, in fact some people really fight against it in the church. Scripture says that the moment we are born again, saved, forgiven, made alive in Christ, then we are declared saints through his shed blood. Secondly, we are called the faithful. He calls us the faithful in Christ. This requires our effort. This requires us to live out that holiness that has been placed on us, to be faithful in Christ. Paul ends his salutation by saying, grace and peace to you. Now both of these are gifts from God. Grace is by definition an undeserved favor. Peace is something that we receive from the Holy Spirit. It's part of the fruit of the Spirit. Both of these are not things that we experience to the full apart from Jesus Christ. The world cannot give us true, lasting peace. And whoever heard of something for nothing in our culture, these are gifts from God. Over the past several weeks, there's been a huge spike in anxiety and stress in our culture. People are living out their, some of them, their worst fears. But God says that he gives us peace in Jesus Christ. 
grace through Jesus Christ. As followers of Jesus, as those called by his name, by those set apart and declared holy, we are to live out this peace that passes understanding. This is something that the world can't give, and it's something we need to show them. As we study through this letter, as we study through the book of Ephesians, I want for us to imagine that Paul himself has been writing this letter to the Good News Community Church in Riley. And as we study and explore the truth that is here, I pray that we will be changed to be more like the individuals that we need to be, the ones he has called us to be, to be God's holy people, faithful in Christ Jesus. I encourage you guys to take some time over the next week to, to read through the book of Ephesians, to, uh, if you have the opportunity and you have the time, to read the whole book all through at one time. And if not, just take it one day at a time and just read one chapter as you go. Um, study through this amazing book. Maybe read it in a couple of different translations. And just to understand what it is and what we have been given in Jesus Christ. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. I'm just going to close in prayer and, and then uh, encourage you guys to, to keep on being the body, to keep on being the church. Thank you, Lord, for this time together and for this opportunity to minister through this media. I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen and encourage your church, even as we are apart and maybe not physically together, that you would build up your church as only you can. Through Jesus Christ we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks and God bless you.